polynomials. Earl is building a doghouse whose front is in the shape of a square topped with a triangle. There will be a rectangular door through which the dog can enter and exit the house. Earl wants to find the area of the front of the doghouse so that he can purchase the correct amount of paint. Using the measurements of the front of the house shown in figure one, we can create an expression that combines several variable terms, allowing us to solve this problem and others like it. First, find the area of the square in feet. Area of a square equals A equals S squared. Then find the area of the triangle in square feet. Area of a triangle equals A equals half times base times height. And next, find the area of the rectangular door in square feet. Area of a rectangular door in square feet is A equals length times width. The area of the front of the dog, front of the doghouse can be found by adding the area, areas of the square and the triangle. And then subtracting the area of the rectangle. When we do this, we get 4x squared plus 3 halves x minus x feet squared, or 4x squared plus half x feet squared. In this section, we will examine expressions such as this one, which combines several variable terms. Identifying the degree and leading coefficient of polynomials. The formula just found is an example of a polynomial, which is a sum of or difference of terms, each consisting of a variable raised to a non-negative integer power. A number multiplied by a variable raised to an exponent such as 384 pi is known as a coefficient. The coefficients can be positive, negative, or zero, and can be whole numbers, decimals, or fractions. Each product, a sub i, x raised to the i power, such as 384 pi w, is a term of a polynomial. If a term does not contain a variable, it is called a constant. A polynomial containing, containing only one term, such as 5x to the fourth power, is called a monomial. A polynomial containing two terms, such as 2x minus 9, is called a binomial. A polynomial containing three terms, such as negative 3x squared plus 8x minus 7, is called a trinomial. We can find the degree of a polynomial by identifying the highest power of the variable that occurs in the polynomial. The term with the highest degree is called the leading term because it is usually written first. The coefficient of the leading term is called the leading coefficient. When a polynomial is written so that the powers are descending, we say that it is in standard form. Polynomials. A polynomial is an expression that can be written in the form a sub n x to the nth power plus, and so on, plus a sub 2 x to the squared power plus a sub 1 x plus a sub 0. Each real number a sub i is called a coefficient. The number a sub zero that is not multiplied by a variable is called a constant. Each product a sub i x to the i power is a term of a polynomial. The highest power of the variable that occurs in the polynomial is called the degree of a polynomial. The leading term is a term with the highest power and its coefficient is called the leading coefficient. Example one, identifying the degree and leading coefficient of a polynomial. For the following polynomials, identify the degree, the leading term, and the leading coefficient. A, three plus two x squared minus four x thirds. The highest power of x is three, so the degree is three. The leading term is the term containing that degree, negative four x cubed, and the leading coefficient is the coefficient of that term, negative four. B, 5t to the fifth power minus 2t cubed plus 7t. The highest power of t is 5, so the degree is 5. The leading term is the term containing the degree, 5t to the fifth power. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of that term, 5. C, 6p minus p cubed minus 2. The highest power of p is 3, so the degree is 3. The leading term is the term containing that degree. 
negative p cubed, and the leading coefficient is the coefficient of that term, negative 1. Adding and subtracting polynomials. We can add and subtract polynomials by combining like terms, which are terms that contain the same variables raised to the same exponents. For example, 5x squared and negative 2x squared are like terms and can be added to get 3x squared, but 3x and 3x squared are not like terms and therefore cannot be added. Example 2, adding polynomials. Find the sum. 12x squared plus 9x minus 21 plus 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 5x plus 20. We have to combine like terms, then simplify, and our solution is 4x cubed plus 20x squared plus 4x minus 1. Analysis. We can check our answers to these types of problems using a graphing calculator. To check, graph the problem as given along with the simplified answer. The two graphs should be equivalent. Be sure to use the same window to compare the graphs. Using different windows can make the expression seem equivalent when they are not. Example three, find the difference, subtracting polynomials. Seven X to the fourth power minus X squared plus six X plus one minus five X cubed minus two X squared plus three X plus two. Combine like terms, simplify, and our solution is 7x to the fourth power minus 5x cubed plus x squared plus 3x minus 1. Analysis. Note that finding the difference between two polynomials is the same as adding the opposite of the second polynomial to the first. Multiplying polynomials. Multiplying polynomials is a bit more challenging than adding and subtracting polynomials. We must use the distributive property to multiply each term in the first polynomial by each term in the second polynomial. We then combine like terms, and we can also use a shortcut called the FOIL method when multiplying binomials. Certain special products follow patterns that we can memorize and use instead of multiplying the polynomials by hand each time. We will look at a variety of ways to multiply polynomials. Multiplying polynomials using the distributive property. To multiply a number by a polynomial, we use the distributive property. The number must be distributed to each term of the polynomial. We can distribute the 2 in 2 multiplied by x plus 7 to obtain the equivalent expression 2x plus 14. When multiplying polynomials, the distributive property allows us to multiply each term of the first polynomial by each term of the second. We then add the products together and combine like terms to simplify. Example four, multiplying polynomials using the distributive property. Find the product, 2x plus one multiplied by 3x squared minus x plus four. Use the distributive property, multiply, Combine like terms, simplify, and our solution is 6x cubed plus x squared plus 7x plus 4. Analysis. We can use a table to keep track of our work as shown in table 1. Write one polynomial across the top and the other down the side. For each box in the table, multiply the term for that row by the term for that column. Then add all of the terms together, combine like terms, and simplify using FOIL to multiply binomials. A shortcut called FOIL is sometimes used to find the product of two binomials. It is called FOIL because we multiply the first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last terms of each binomial. The FOIL method arises out of the distributive property. We are simply multiplying each term of the first binomial by each term of the second binomial and then combining like terms. Example five, use the FOIL to multiply binomials. Use FOIL to find the product. 2x minus 10 multiplied by 3x plus 3. Find the product of the first terms. Find the product of the outer terms. Find the product of the inner terms. Find the product of the last terms. Add the products. 
combine like terms, and simplify. Perfect square trinomials. Certain binomial products have special forms. When a binomial is squared, the result is called a perfect square trinomial. We can find the square of multiplying the binomial by itself. However, there is a special form that each of these perfect square trinomials takes and memorizing the form makes squaring binomials much easier and faster. Let's look at a few perfect square trinomials to familiarize ourselves with the form. x plus five squared equals x squared plus 10x plus 25 x minus three to the second power equals x squared minus six x plus nine and four x minus one raised to the second power equals four x squared minus eight x plus one. Notice that the first term of each trinomial is the square of the first term of the binomial and similarly, the last term of each trinomial is the square of the last term of the binomial. The middle term is double the product of the two terms. And lastly, we see that the first sign of the trinomial is the same as the sign of the binomial. Perfect square trinomials. When a binomial is squared, the result of the first term squared added to double, added to double the product of both terms and the last term squared. X plus A raised to the second power equals X plus A multiplied by X plus A equals X squared plus 2AX plus A squared. Example six, expanding perfect squares. Expand 3X minus eight raised to the second power. Begin by squaring the first term and the last term. For the middle term of the trinomial, double the product of the two terms. 3x squared minus 2 multiplied by 3x multiplied by 8 plus negative 8 raised to the second power. And then simplify, that gives us 9x squared minus 48x plus 64. Differences of squares. Another special product is called the differences, the difference of squares, which occurs when we multiply a binomial by another binomial with the same terms, but the opposite sign. Let's see what happens when we multiply x plus one multiplied by x minus one using the FOIL method. x plus one multiplied by x minus one equals x squared minus x plus x minus one equals x squared minus one. The middle term drops out, resulting in a difference of squares, just as we did with the perfect squares. Let's look at a few examples. x plus five multiplied by x minus five equals x squared minus 25 x plus 11 multiplied by x minus 11 equals x squared minus 121, and 2x plus 3 multiplied by 2x minus 3 equals 4x squared minus 9. Because the sign changes in the second binomial, the outer and inner terms cancel each other out, and we are left only with the square of the first term minus the square of the last term. Q&A. Is there a special form for the sum of squares? No. The difference of squares occurs because the opposite signs of the binomials cause the middle term to disappear. There are no two binomials that multiply to equal a sum of squares. Difference of squares. When a binomial is multiplied by a binomial with the same term separated by the opposite sign, the result is the square of the first term minus the square of the last term. A plus B multiplied by A minus five equals A squared minus B squared. Example seven, multiplying binomials resulting in a difference of squares. Multiply nine X plus four multiplied by nine X minus four. Square the first term to get 9x squared equals 81x squared. Square the last term to get 4 squared equals 16. Subtract the square of the last term from the square of the first term to find the product of 81x squared minus 16. Performing operations with polynomials of seven, several variables. We have looked at polynomials containing only one variable. However, a polynomial can contain several variables. All of the same rules, rules apply when working with polynomials containing several variables. Consider an example. A plus 2B multiplied by 4A minus B minus C. 
use the distributive property, multiply, combine like terms, and simplify. Multiplying polynomials containing several variables. Multiply x plus 4 multiplied by 3x minus 2y plus 5. Follow the same steps that we use to multiply polynomials containing only one variable. Use the distributive property, multiply, combine like terms, and simplify.